what is going on sheep army this is your boy random marks coming with a quick video and on this video guys we're going to be talking about burns guys so it's been a lot of confusion as far as like burning so i mean so many different questions was asked when it comes to burns so i thought i have to make this video just to be able to clear it up because this is definitely a learning opportunity and i get crypto is definitely a vast a place with so much information so this is really the purpose of this video and it all sparked from this tweet or this post that i did on x and i was talking about the soul killer you know how it uh opens up possibilities of different projects to be able to come to shibarium and one of the key aspects of it was burning so imagine this you have you know the the i would say the shiba inu only maximus people that wants to see a she burn so if a project is launched onto Shibarium, they could actually incorporate a liquidity pool where instead of it being bone, it would actually be Sheeb. Like this is a possibility that anybody could do it. A good example of this is Walk Token. Walk Token, they believe in Leash. Um, and this is why instead of they having um, their main liquidity paired with bone on Shibarium, they actually made their liquidity paired with Leash. So in order for you to buy that token, you need to have your Leash. So the same thing could be done with any project on Shibarium. So when people try to say, hey, Shibarium is for bone. No, it's just that whoever's building that's what they're deciding to build around so shibarium is for any of the tokens that's currently on uh that's within the ecosystem so i said this i said for more she burns project could launch a pool with their token with sheep um and i explained to them like as far as what's happening right now with the soul killer about 1000 bone is being burnt per day you know on the layer two um and the same thing with the uh, soul killer you know about 10 million is being burnt per day um for the soul killer and this is the transaction right here um and this part, you know, when I said, hey, it's being burnt on a layer two, a lot of people didn't understand that. And the thing is, when it comes to education, as far as within the crypto sphere, most people think it's just one way and that's the only way. So I had to break it down to you as far as like the beginning of it. So the first thing that you guys have to realize when it comes to burns, there are so many different ways of actually uh, of a burn. The most common way that most people know is looking at the null, the dead wallet. They think, you know, the only way that something is burned is by sending this to this wallet. While that is probably the second effective way to be uh, as far as for a burn to be done, that is actually not the way to be burned. Because if something is truly burnt, it's no longer as far as in the max supply. A good example of that. And that's what you're starting to see now with more and more contracts that's coming out. Um, when it comes to burn, instead of having a, de a designated uh, burn wallet, they actually just take it out from the maximum supply completely. So Prometheus, that's how their contract is designed. Because keep in mind, guys. All of these are code. That's all it is, just code. How is uh, design? So newer contracts, the true burns, you know, that I like to see at least, is it being taken away from the max supply. So when we're talking about Shiba Inu, we're talking about Leeds, we're talking about Bone, the way that burns are currently happening, again, these are all new technology. At the time that these contracts was written, you know, people didn't uh, know about that uh, idea or whatever. But as it currently stands right now with Shiba Inu, the dead wallet, that's the way that most people only think of it. But again, remember, when it comes to burns, there's so many different ways. So I just showed you guys two different ways just now. Uh, another way that you could achieve burns is by a token going to a contract that people can get access to. So even right now with the Shiba Inu um, contract, this is the uh, Shiba Inu contract right here. I'm sorry, this is, a, this is the wrong one. This is the Shiba Inu contract right here. So currently right now, there's over $6 million that's currently burnt on the contract because remember shiba inu the contract is renounced people sent token to the contract address now those token are stuck on these contract address not having a way to be able to come out because there's no owner to the contract since there's no owner to the contract then these are considered burn tokens as well too so that's another way you know some people lose lose their keys um kind of like the thing with bitcoin you know where someone lost you know over 20 or 30 million dollars worth of bitcoin because they lost their keys that's another form of burn because keep in mind when it comes to burn it means that these tokens can never get access to so if someone lost their seed phrase or something like that send tokens to the wrong address or send to the wrong um, wallet or tokens getting stuck on a bridge um those are all considered burn because the the goal of the burn is for tokens not to be able to get back into circul into um, the circulating supply so when i say hey this is what's happening right now on the layer two, then that is a form of burn. Now there's definitely pros and cons in just burning on the base layer, which is the layer one versus, uh, you know, burning on the layer two. And the only benefit as far as for that is the potential of an exploit because on the bridge, we do see a lot of exploits happen on the bridge. So technically they could actually, you know, if there was an exploit, they could take some of those tokens. Um, I mean, that is something that have happened before on BNB, um, but it's, it's starting to become less common, but that is a thing. So 
another burn is on different layers because keep in mind even though shiba inu is a ethereum based token it is pegged on different chains so meaning other chains created shiba inu to follow the movement of what's happening on ethereum so there is a you know bs uh a binance shiba inu it just mirrors what's happening on the ethereum you have a solana shiba inu as well too where you could actually take your shiba inu that's on the ethereum side and just transfer it over to binance or transfer it over to solana like you're seeing here or even a hetera um you still have those options of being able to do it but the only thing is it would only move based upon what it's doing on the ethereum because that is what it's mirroring after and along those lines as people bridging their shiba inu they sometimes send it to the wrong address send it to the um wrong wallet and that end up burning shiba inu as well too so that's one thing that i'm just trying to drill into you guys head there's so many different ways of actually seeing a burn without it actually just have to go to a dead wallet so this is right here um shiba inu on uh binance and even if you take a look as far as how much uh shiba inu is currently uh burnt nine thousand three hundred and seven dollars worth of shiba inu but that again that is taken away from a circulating supply because most people think because they look at coin market cap like you look at coin market cap you think that is the correct number as far as circulating supply coin market cap is just a provider as far as a a source of data so if it doesn't have the all the wallets that's currently in place then as far as them reporting this number for circulating supply then it's not correct so actually the circulating supply for shiba inu is lower than what's being reported on um coin market cap and keep in mind as well too they're getting their data from etherscan and etherscan only are able to show the first 1,000 address, top 1,000 holders out of 1.38 million holders. So along those lines, some some of the wallets that's currently out there that own Shiba Inu, you know, you could have had some people that died. They no longer have access to their wallet. That's taken away from the circulating supply. Um, so the whole point that I'm making behind all of this is numbers when it comes to circulating supply does not have to reflect on coin market cap. You know, if it's already out of circulating supply, it's like this. So if, you know, it's like me holding, uh, you know, putting two behind my back, like whether or not if you see that I'm holding two behind my back, it does not matter. You know, two is still behind my back, whether you see it. So that's the same way that it goes for what's currently being in circulation. Because someone was like, well, you know, if it's not burnt on the layer one, how is it going to reflect? Like it, it really does not need to be reflected because all we're talking about just something that's, you know, that you visibly see. If it's happening in the background and you can even track it your own self, you know, I mean, that's going to take a couple extra work, but you could track it yourself. And kind of like with the whole she burns, they're like, well, she burns, um, you know, how are we going to track with them? Like, that's something that he decided to do as far as uh, getting his data. He had to put, you know, variables um, to be able to get the tracking of, uh, you know, of the burns. So if it want to be updated even further to get a little bit more accurate, then those those figures or those wallets have to be considered as well too so when i look at coin market cap i just take it with a grain of salt i'm like i just give it a roundabout figure because at the end of the day they're not going to account for every single possible thing to be able to give you an exact circulating supply i'm not saying it's impossible but th but then again you, they would have to know every single wallet so and i'm and i'm getting somewhere with this so make sure you guys still follow along now this was the wallet again this is the shiba inu wallet address you know for the token this is the contract address so if you go to down the line as far as like uh where this ranks at you'll be able to see i think it's like either on page seven or eight or something like that let me see if i could get that pulled up because it was like 244 billion token so the contract address you know, page seven the contract address is right the wrong wallet uh, this is prometheus never mind but the whole point that i was making though um and, I, and i'll be able to find it somewhere but the whole point that i was making is there's different burns so after you realize there's so many different burns now you could be able to have a better understanding as far as like what's happening on to shibarium so when i'm talking about burns this is what i'm talking about well first you do also need to understand how it works you know when you're going from layer one to layer two what's happening in the background so for keeping the numbers simple, we're going to say the max supply of this token is 10. So if somebody wanted to bridge over one token onto the layer two, what would end up happening is that one token gets uh, 
you know goes through a bridging wallet and that token just get parked there then it automatically mints a new token on the layer one and it's going to be one to one ratio meaning the value of this one that's mint is exactly the same as the one on the uh layer one but in fact what would end up happening would be and you know remember if the total supply is 10 it's going to take one away from the supply and that would make nine tokens on the layer one and one token on the layer two to always keep it out of balance of 10. So that's what's happening. So in the case of bone, 250 uh, million tokens is gonna be split between the layer one and the layer two as far as how much is available. If you're taking it back up, as far as getting it back up to the layer one, it's gonna destroy that one token that you have here, um, putting it back to the layer two, then now we're gonna have 10 tokens all together again. So when something is burnt on the layer two, kind of like how we're seeing right now, with that example that I gave is this is just going, you know, the burns is going to a, a wallet. So it's going to get stuck onto the layer two. So it's not going to give it an opportunity to be able to, because remember, if it goes to a wallet that can't be accessed to, then there's no way that we could actually rebridge the token back up to the layer one. So in this case, if it was like nine token on a layer one, on layer one and one token on the layer two, but this one token goes to a dead wallet on the layer two, then now this one token is locked forever. So automatically, you know, the numbers of as far as how much total token is going to be, that's still going to be the same. But this one that's stuck on the bridge, it's just going to be left on the bridge, unable to get access to, you know, stuck on this bridge. Because keep in mind, the only way that you can get it off the bridge is by getting, um, you know, by destroying it on the layer two and causing it to go to the bridge to be able to be redeemed. So if it get destroyed, I mean, if it gets uh, to a wallet that it can't, nobody can get access to, then that token is just going to get stuck on the bridge, causing it, you know, essentially to be burnt. And few examples that you're able to see right here on Shibarium right now, these are, they go dead wallet right here. So, so far, as far as how many bone is burnt, you know, to a dead wallet is 179,000. Uh, Not only that, you have a contract address right here that's also burning bone. And this is from um, Soul Killer. And that contract's renounced. So if the contract's renounced, meaning nobody could get access to these tokens right here. So this is what we're seeing. And when I'm saying, like, as far as with the suggestions with Bert, uh, for Shiba Inu, people could do the very same thing. They could do this very same thing to be able to get more tokens onto Shibaria because at the end of the day, it's going to help out, you know, the, the Shiba only people. Like for me, I take it as a, you know, I look at it more from a practical aspect as far as investment. So I try to diversify myself on every single aspect. So that way I'm able to capitalize on whatever, you know, the market may bring. I'm putting the, you know, destiny in my hands versus relying on others. So, so hopefully guys, this was educational enough because uh, I know some people were um, asking as far as like um, a breakdown of as far as with burns, but you know, there's some parts that I left out as far as technical and stuff like that. But other than that, I try to keep this as basic as possible so you guys can understand. So let me know in the comment down below your thoughts, your opinion about all this. Random Mark signing off. Peace.